And hello everyone, how's it going? Henry is back and welcome to another exciting kind of tutorial today. Uh, we're going to be talking about a product called Simbrief. It is 100% free and available to all of you wonderful simmers out there. Now, some of you might have heard about it before. This is for the new people. Now, if you didn't really know this before the, <laughs> in the before times, before the pandemic, um, I was actually a dispatcher with a major airline. So basically we'd do flight plans and stuff. Uh, with flight sim and all these new modern flight sims, they do an all right job, kind of like planning your flights. But what if I told you, we could give you the tools to professionally flight plan your own, uh, well, flight plan. <laughs> and, uh, literally give you all like the cool stats and everything you need just like the real airliners do well today i will show you this amazing tool online you can go with simbrief.com it's an awesome tool i think i did another video similar on um what was it on sky vector but today we're talking about simbrief so what is it so it's basically a dispatch system for your flight system it's all in browser based but you can download it into your flight sim whether it's x-plane flight sim 2020 a lot of aircraft are directly supported in here. Uh, so let's do a quick run through of what this is. And before I even start, the cool thing about this is that it's actually fairly up to date. You can see the Eric cycle uh, 2003 uh, that was expired on the 25th of March, 2021. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fairly recent. So this is really good. So let's go over quickly. So after you create a free account, you go into dispatch system, dispatch system you get these first markers the first thing you want to do is create your fleet so pretty much you just say new airframe and you pretty much choose the aircraft you want to fly so uh, again sim brief supports most uh, modern day uh, airline aircraft whether if it's an airbus atr boeing uh, bombardier md80 whatever whatever you're using even they even have a tupelov in here um they even has a I have a Cirrus SR-22 in here. Wow. Um, so yeah, uh, you basically just choose your aircraft and most of the uh, stuff is auto filled out for you. It's great. Now, once you have your flight, once you have your uh, aircraft selected, we're going to say new flight. All right. And you get all this mumbo jumbo. You've probably never seen a lot of this before, but we're going to go through filling out a stage really, really quickly. All right. So first off, let's create... Um, I don't know, ACA. I'm, I'm Canadian, so I'm just going to choose Air Canada, all right? So let's go Air Canada 102, uh, departure, CYYZ, arrival. What's a long... Let, let's just do Vancouver. I think 102 might be Vancouver as well. All right. So I put in YVR. Uh, alternate. What an alternate is, is that if you can't land at Vancouver, you have to fly somewhere else. So if that's Comox or whatever. So set that to auto in real life we would you know look at notums and everything but this is just a demo and then of course your time and departure for departing we're going to choose our aircraft that we created just before and advanced aircraft options so if you want to set anything so like your client profile cruise everything else we're going to leave everything at auto for now uh fin number sure whatever else 251 now off to the right here before we go any uh further we just want to take a look at this cool stuff right here um what the ofp is is it's your operational flight plan so it's it's just a flight plan it's just ofp um so what leo is is it's one of the most popular airline dispatching flight tools in the world so that's the layout i'm going to choose aca because it's air canada that's the airline we're pretending to be right now um and it's actually fairly accurate from experience they actually did a really good job looking at this um, comp fuel, so contingency fuel, so depending on what airline you want to pretend to be, uh, we're just going to leave that auto, so pretty much it gives you like an extra 3% or 10 minutes, etc. What you need, reserve fuel, again, we're going to leave that auto, different for airline, could be like built in another 15 minutes, whatever. These options down here, you can leave them in, this is just uh, going to be for your OFP, so uh, detail nav blog, step climbs, etc. We're going to keep everything in. <sighs> optional entries fields are automatically calculated so yeah so pretty much these are your built-in everything's automatic so it literally takes real world weather it chooses your departure runway and arrival runway so leaving runway 23 in toronto arriving 26 left 
And of course, our built-in taxi in and out times. So 20 minutes of extra fuel for taxiing on the ground. Um, now, the important part about this is that you plan on using all this fuel. So if you want to add fuel for the flight, that goes in extra fuel. We'll, we'll get to that in a second here. Um, so let's say if it's like a rainy, rainy day and uh, you want to add like an extra 300 kilos because you're expecting... Uh, you're, you're expecting like weather delays or whatnot, or the pilot asks, you, you just want more fuel. In dispatch remarks, you could say 300 kilograms added as per, I don't know, request, or you could say like weather or whatever. That, I don't want to get into too much detail here. You can have your captain name, haha, <laughs> I'm flying. Put your passengers, you can add your cargo, we're just going to leave it at auto for now. Uh, Eric cycle. So again, you can get a more updated version. I think that's paid, but whatever. Huh. And route. So again, with the Eric cycle 2003, it gives you your route. So these are your waypoints, ADFs. Uh, it also gives your uh, Canuck for arrival and your AVSEP 6. I believe that's their uh, SID, so their departure. So you can, there's different routes that the system has here that you can book. Um, root finder so you can make your own so if you want to play around you can have a lot of fun uh, you can get weather alternative reports so again if you want to do your own alternative selection you can do it etops you don't have to worry about this this is more like going overseas so ex extended uh, twin engine operations so again if you lose lose an engine going over the sea will you be able to make it to an airfield in Iceland for example uh, I'm not going to go over ETOPS today. That's a little bit complicated. Um, but yeah, down here, this is your pre-generated flight plan. The visuals anyways. So as you can see, we're taking Toronto. It looks like we're taking the northern route or the states. Uh, again, this is compensating for the uh, wind and everything else. And the cool thing is that you can do a takeoff alternate as well as a landing alternate. Takeoff alternate is like, for example, if something happens uh, at the runway and... Uh, you're below uh, minimum you know, landing requirements, then you can land at Hamilton or somewhere and uh, vice versa. So again, if you can't land in Vancouver, we can go off to uh, YYQ, I believe that is Comox. Um, and of course, we will see all that in a second. All right, so now that everything is pretty much filled out, uh, let's just do this. It's, it's automatic, but I'll just type this in really quickly here. All right, so now that we filled everything out, nice and peasy where you want to go, we want to say generate OFP. So that's generate flight plan using these options. Yes. It'll take a few seconds, which is way better than real life. You know, you know flight dispatch systems take a while because they have to go over so many rules for a different airline and everything else. So this is kind of like our light version. We'll look at the full PDF in a second here. But again, we have our routing, we have our remarks, we have our Eric cycle, everything else. This is the actual flight plan. We're going to go over it for a second. That's the desktop application. You can download any of these. So like even uh, flights in 2020, you download it and you can save, you can literally load up the flight from within the sim, which is great. Um, and if you're part of that sim or something, you can pre-file through the system as well. That is absolutely fantastic. Um, so it has all the notams, everything else, if you want to do your flying. But now let's look over the flight plan, which is very, very important, hence the entire reason of this video. So OFP, release one. So first revision, nothing else. So we have the flight, we have the date, we have Toronto to Vancouver. We have the captain's name, their number, dispatcher, Robertson, Diane. I'm pretty sure this is just like random numbers, just generated random name as well. Uh, we have the aircraft, VIN, registration, etc. North America. We have our <laughs> we don't have a takeoff alternative. Dispatch remarks. Uh, we see that 300 kilos added that we did earlier. Again, this is in the Air Canada format that we selected. So if you just did the Lido format, your format's going to be different than mine. But don't worry. So we have the dispatch. Uh, we have the MEL items. So. Mechanical issues with the aircraft, we don't have any, so we don't have to worry about those. Nothing really to worry about right here. Um, so coming to planning summary, so again, depending on what you decided to do, we have a few different numbers here. So we have uh, flight level 360, so that's kind of like the uh, 360 is our main uh, altitude that we're going to be using for this flight. 
the truffle paws is at 49,000, sorry, correction, 46,900. Um, our cost index for this flight, so basically a calculation for cost, fuel burn, everything else, is five. Our great circle distance is 1,806, so that's like a direct line between Toronto and Vancouver on the Earth. And our distance of our flight plan is 1,846, so that's actually pretty good. You know, that's pretty darn close. The closer to this number, the better. So that'll be four hours, 24 minutes. And our burn is 9.5, so 9,500 kilos of fuel. Uh, coming down to our flight plan route, we see departing Toronto runway 23. Uh, so it looks like we have a point here. We have the ASAP 6. And then, of course, we have our different um, waypoints in here. So we have Musset, direct Sault Ste. Marie, direct YQT, direct. So we have pretty much all the way over to Booth, connect for arrival to Vancouver. Uh, runway 26 left. We don't have to worry about that. It's a sim. We have our alternate info. So again, if we can't land at uh, Vancouver, we're going uh, up to Comox. Uh, 10,000 feet. We have our distance. Uh, it's going to be around a half hour. An extra burn. So another uh, 1.0. So another 1,000 kilos of fuel there. So that is built into our flight plan. And we can see that below here with our fuel info. Um, so again, that's our taxi, taxi fuel, 0 0.2, that gives us 15 minutes on the ground. Burn time, 4 hours 24, that's 9.5. We got our extra, so that we put in, you and I, we put in that earlier. That's an extra 7 minutes of flight time. So if they get, I don't know, 7 minutes hold, whatever. Contingency fuel, that's burnt in, that's built in. We have our alternate fuel, so the going off to Comox, that's an extra half hour. Final reserve. That's reserve half hour. ETOPS, don't worry about it. Weather fuel didn't have anything in. And don't have to worry about this. Operational impacts. So if they put an extra ton of people, we get our extra burn time. Like, you can expect to burn an extra 0.1. Vice versa. And, of course, flight change. So if you go up a level or down a level, you can see how much you will burn or not burn. P is plus, M is minus, and speed change. So, again, if you go cost index 50, a little bit faster, you get an extra 0.2 burn. All right, and you get there five minutes earlier. So if you want to burn that much extra fuel to save five minutes, probably not, whatever. Ah, we have our times. So we have our out, off, on, and in. So out is out of the gate, off is from the runway, on is onto the runway, and in is into the gate. These are the uh, schedule times on the right side here. And these are your estimated. So as you can see here, so our estimated time is uh, pretty much half hour before this. So if we wanted to, we could actually slow it down, but we're not going to. And our block time is four hours. Scheduled is, so we're getting there faster. So we could literally just slow this plane down if we wanted to, but for the sake of just this tutorial, we are not. All right, so release one, we're looking at our weight. So we have 186 people, zero fuel weight is 63.7. So the aircraft without fuel, we add 12.5 for fuel. Takeoff weight will be our wonderful 76.1. Your max is 76.9. So we're getting close, but we're okay. And our estimated landing weight, all right? So 66.6, .6, unlucky number, whatever. And 67.4 is our max. So we are looking good there. So again, terrain clearance check. So basically just checking the terrain, no, no issues. You're going to be fine for gliding. Come down to your flight log so you can actually see each waypoint, etc. So lat longitude, you have your estimated time en route. So four minutes in, etc. You have your flight level. So we'll be at ASAP at around 16,200. We have our distances, true airspeed, ground speed, wind component, everything else. I'm not going to go over everything. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. You have your wind info. So, for example, at 35,000 feet, you have your heading, speed, and, of course, temperature. So this is the ICAO flight plan. So this is the strip for ATC, pretty much. So you can go through that. It has our routing, everything else. That's ATC will see and pretty much everything else is just notams and everything else so your airline has different uh, airline uh, company notams and then of course you go down to your uh, destination notams everything else in real life you would check all this but of course this is 
just a sim so we don't have to worry about too much any of this unless if you're hardcore and you go it has to be so realistic i need to turn off the runway lights and so and so whatever and the cool thing is, is that this also gives you like your little uh weather briefing charts as well so you can uh pretty much your sig rigs so you can see like any um storms your wind everything else and, and yeah and the other cool thing is is that if we go into there you go this is what i want to see the flight level here so we can actually see a vertical profile so our top of climb you can see here and then we um the program actually kind of go goes below this uh, obstruction here and we uh, go a little bit lower so if we wanted to we could just cap that but uh or even just go like below to 35 but we're gonna keep it for now um so that is pretty darn cool so there we go So downloading the actual flight plan, so this is the PDF version, it's the, it's the same. So uh, I can do a tutorial on importing it to uh, Flight Sim 2020, explain whatever you want. But pretty much, easiest way is that you just put this directly into the FMS. So you put each waypoint, again, DCT, that's direct to Sault Ste. Marie. That's not a waypoint, that's a same direct. So we have Musset, direct, Sault Ste. Marie. So when you're putting it into the FMS, you put the AFSIP 6. And then you go to Musset, to St. Marie, YQT, BBI, etc. Um, so yeah, it's a really cool tool. And again, this is free. So if you've never checked out Simbrief before, I'd highly recommend it. And it works with a new uh, released Airbus um, that for free on uh, Flight Sim 2020. So definitely give that a shoot. Uh, definitely give that a look. If you have any questions about this, uh, dispatching in general, what is it like to dispatch in real life? What is it like? Again, I never really, um, again, this was the before time, so it's been over a year, so <laughs> rip career, am I right? Um, but yeah, and of course it supports all these different exports. But yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Have a great day, everyone. Fly safe, and as always, happy landings.